I'm joined now by Tariq Malik. He's an astro journalist and managing editor of Space.com. Tariq, this must be a very exciting day for you. It's, it's always an exciting day when you have a spacecraft as big as this, uh, uh, this space lab coming down. You know, we don't know when it's going to uh, fall. Uh, and as, as you mentioned earlier, there are sky watchers around the world hoping to catch a glimpse of this um, if it falls somewhere where they can see. What led up to its re-entry? Well, Tiangong-1 has been in orbit, you know, for uh, just over, uh, you know, s seven years or so, almost at seven years. And when they lost contact in 2016, they lost that ability to tell it to fire its thrusters to stay in orbit. And over time, uh, that, uh, that general loss of control, if you will, just leads the spacecraft to slowly descend. There's drag up there. You know, most of the space is empty, but there's still bits of, of the Earth's atmosphere that slow it over time. And uh, as, as it slows, it just falls and descends, and then it starts to tumble. The spacecraft is tumbling right now, uh, and that all uh, kind of leads up to a fall from space. But there's many variables, how thick the atmosphere is, how is it tumbling, uh, that affect when and where it's going to fall. So I understand it's supposed to burn up upon re-entry, but for space novices like myself, explain how this is going to come back into our, our atmosphere but not hurt anyone. Well, Tiangong-1 is about the size of a school bus, and it has these big solar arrays that stick out from the sides of it to generate power. As it descends, uh, kind of like a, a boundary layer, the... the, the uh, you know, the, the finish line, if you will, to, to hit the atmosphere, it will start to, to heat up. The, as the atmosphere gets thicker, it'll push more on the spacecraft, uh, and that, that friction will, will just get hotter and hotter and hotter. The solar arrays will break off, and then it will just turn into a big tumble, and as it tumbles, bits will, will fall apart. The lighter bits maybe get, get flung off, and uh, the whole thing kind of just incinerates uh, on the way down. Uh, spacecraft that do return have to have protective heat shields uh, to keep that searing heat away from them so that they can safely land like the space shuttle or splash down like capsules uh, uh, for uh, the Shenzhou vehicles as well. Uh, Tiangong-1 doesn't have any of that. It will just kind of rip apart and those pieces will just get hotter and hotter. Most of them will melt. Some big pieces might survive, but it's very, very remote that they might hurt anybody. Tell us uh, about China's space program compared to, let's say, the EU's and the U.S.'s. China's really out there in front. Well, yeah, you know, China has been taking a very methodical approach to its human spaceflight program. Uh, as, as you see, like, you know, in the early days with the, uh, Russia and the United States, they would launch many things and see what worked and what didn't. And China has kind of uh, taken all of the lessons learned in those early space programs and applied them to uh, a, a 21st century uh, approach. Uh, you've seen that they, they haven't maybe launched as many uh, crewed missions to Tiangong-1 uh, as well as Tiangong-2, uh, but the missions that, that did fly to these vehicles have really informed what the China Manned Space, uh, space Engineering Office is going to put towards their final space station that they're going to start launching in the next year or two, actually. How do they fund these projects, private or public? Well, the, the, the program right now is a national program, so it, it, it is a, a government project with the uh, China Manned Space Engineering Office running uh, the human space flight part of it. Um, but, uh, you know, as, as the, the interest grows, as the market grows, you know, you may see uh, China kind of join uh, the, the commercial side of, uh, of, of space flight as well. Uh, China has been launching commercial space, flight, uh, space satellites. For, uh, for customers, and they are developing new rockets as well. They are building the Long March 5 uh, heavy lift to launch uh, the, the new space station modules in 2019 and 2020. Uh, and then, of course, the crewed program is continuing, too, with Shenzhou 12, which would be that first mission to that new space station. Well, Tariq Malik, we're going to leave it right there. We're very excited, as we know you are, and uh, I'm sure we'll be speaking with you again. Thank you so much for joining us.